Saboya! 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 Ruff! What's up? Be careful where you step today because you don't want to shatter the glass animals. <laughs> glass animals just dropped their new album, I Love You So Effing Much. The light, the light is a little bit too bright. Hey, mice. Glass Animals just dropped their new record, I Love You So Effing Much. And it, it, it was a good album. It was a good album. To, needless to say, when, when I first listened to it, we put it on, we went for a drive, we went to a park, we spun it, and then we spun it back. It was just that good. It was so solid start to finish, and it's only 40 minutes, but it's a solid 40 minutes. The band Glass Animals. I, I really like Last Animals. I like their previous record, Dreamland. Dreamland was a solid, solid album. The song Heat Waves from Dreamland is actually what got me into Glass Animals, the band. And I listen. I listen to all of their other records, and they're all really solid. They all, I th they all tell really great stories. I think what what Dave Bailey or Glass Animals does best is storytelling, and with all of their cosmic and almost psychedelic but more nostalgic nostalgic psychedelic sound and this album does not fail to deliver those themes but it actually I think what this album does better is it tells the story in a more concise way it it really you can tell that the lyrical the, the songwriting ability has improved greatly even from the previous record with amazing lyrics that really captivate the soul <laughs> the first two tracks to drop from this record were Creatures in Heaven and A Tear in Space, and both of them great in their own regard. Um, Creatures in Heaven, when it first came out, it was it was a good song. I didn't care for it at first, but I grew to like it more and more. It's still not one of my favorites. A Tear in Space is better than Creatures in Heaven, but again, still not my favorite. And actually, it kind of got me scared because I was like, Ooh, is this all just going to sound with a record? I was kind of hoping for more depth from them. Now, I mean, no offense to the two songs, but neither of them really had that crazy depth to them or a story that I was able to really follow. They felt they felt pretty generic, so I was not exactly thrilled for them. Um, then, but, but but we got the record, we got the record, and I was not shy with it at all. I put it on. Listening to the first track, Show Pony, I think that's what really, really captivated everything. I really like my openers and closers. I believe that if an album has an amazing opener and an amazing closer, then you're telling a great story. No, I just, if you're, if you put a record on, you put your headphones in, you're listening to it, and it starts off just being the most dog thing that you've ever heard, you don't want to listen to the rest of the album. You don't care. You want an opener that sparks an interest, that makes you think, well, what what's to come inside of this record? What what am I expecting? And that's what I think a great opener does. The show Pony delivered. It actually, I think it's their best opener on any of their records they've ever done. It was so solid, start to finish. It was kind of like a prelude that foreshadowed the rest of the album. It it brought up that these characters that we're following, they they're in a marriage, they're newlyweds that they just started, and there's going to be some fights that happen between them, and a lot of love. Love arguments that we don't know where it's going to lead as far as what the relationship means to them I think it sets up the album very thematically very good for what we're expecting for the rest of the record uh, We immediately go into what the hell is happening this track follows this track follows The same characters and well, we'll see these characters again throughout the entire theme. We're following these two characters as newlyweds as they kind of learn how to be with each other they learn they're newlyweds so they have all the struggles that entail with what that means they get in a lot of fights and they have a lot of problems and what the hell is happening comes in right after the first track show pony and we see our character being kidnapped metaphorically he's being kidnapped he's begging for help and then suddenly he's like wait hold fire he he actually is learning to like the situation he's in it's kind of a metaphor for getting comfortably numb being 
comfortable is, is finding out to be comfortable in situations that are kind of tricky. Our character, he kind of learns to like all of the, the scariness that involves the situation he's in. And he's learning to like it. He's learning, he's finally getting okay. And then it ends abruptly and we go into the next song where we kind of start seeing the theme of anger and fighting and all of that stuff inside of their relationship. But what I really like about this record though is the lyricism and I think it's a really funny song. <sighs> we didn't go into Wonderful Nothing and this song, this is the song that sold the album to me. After hearing this song, I was like, shit, this is a good album, this is a good album. We start with some star smooth vocals from Dave Bailey and just carries going on with Weird lyrics like Tell me I'm scrumptious Making you, making you like, well, well, what is he talking about? Well, well, what is this? And then we get, we get the amazing drop <sighs> Honestly, it was, it was such a good listen And we instantly go <sighs> We, we instantly start hearing what's happening I come back here with one pool With this track, we here, our main character, a little, a little annoyed, a little annoyed, throwing punches. We don't know. If, again, this whole thing's very metaphorical. It's probably not physical domestic abuse punches, though. I wouldn't be shocked. They have tackled stuff like this before with domestic bliss from the previous record, but I don't believe that is how he's intending for it to sound for this album specifically. Uh, but lyrically, it is a song about domestic abuse we have one character throwing metaphorical punches towards their significant other and that person kind of throwing them back all while wrapped up in this love versus hate relationship where they both are very happy with each other and, and kind of like what the hell is happening they're both comfortably numb in the situation but they still have arguments that they're bringing up back and forth and it's getting kind of toxic and very not good not good they need help they need to figure something out before it's too late. I don't know what to say. Honestly, very catchy. Makes me want to crank up the speakers and go and listen to the whole track back to back to back. It's solid. Moving on, though, to our next track, we get I Can't Make You Fall In Love Again. And I'll be honest, this song kind of breaks the story. I don't actually know exactly where this is supposed to fall within the story, if it is supposed to even fall in the story, or if it's just added to the track. The rest of the album and all is this one string of the story going on. I don't know how this one fits in with it. Maybe I'm blind to something. I don't really know. But needless to say, this is probably my second favorite track from the record. I think mainly because of Dave Bailey's vocal performance, it's his best vocal performance I've ever heard. I've ever heard from him. From the previous record, Dreamland, Waterfalls coming out your mouth. And Heat Waves have had to be my favorite vocal performance from him. But now I think this song easily takes the cake with his super smooth vocals to his harsh heads to just the catchiness of it all. Plus, lyrically, it's got to be some of the best lyrics that he's ever done on this single track. Song, super solid. Which brings us into... Okay, okay. I skipped a tearing space. I won't talk about it because I don't really care to. It's not my favorite song. I talked about it a little bit before. But anyways, moving on, moving on to uh, my next and probably absolute favorite track from the record, How I Learned to Love the Bomb. This one feels like a very much more mature version of what the hell is happening. We kind of circle back to the beginning a little bit. I circle back to the beginning a little bit. We hear a similar theme of getting comfortably numb, but now we kind of have an in-depth look at what he's talking about because we have our character and he really likes this girl and he's wanting to do everything, but if he says the wrong thing, she explodes. Or if he, if he hits the wrong nerve, she explodes. They're both super young. They're both still trying to figure it out. And he wants a coward away from it all, but he... He says with these lyrics
that he, he does want to make it work. He wants to try. He wants to figure it out. But he understands that he's got to keep his distance. Or he's just got to learn to be respectful, almost, in the situation. Their relationship. You are so cute. I think this song is going to be insane to hear live. And, I mean... Guess you got tickets to Salt Lake City. See, I can't, I can't praise this album enough. It was so solid, the whole 40 minutes. This song has the best chorus I think I've ever heard from any other Glass Animals album, any songs that they've ever done. Moving on, we get White Roses. I'm not going to touch White Roses that much on this one. Um, I probably should have listened to it a couple more times. It's not my favorite. Um, my girlfriend really likes it. It's a solid song. I enjoy it, but it's not my favorite. Uh, we're going to move on to On The Run. I think this song is very important. It's the second to last song in the album. And it kind of is kind of at a breaking point where our... Do you, do you see a mice in here? Is that the breaking point of their relationship where he, he wants to just run away from it? He wants to fake his death, as he says in the song. And he just wants to escape the whole relationship. Call it off. Be done with it. He doesn't want to deal with all the fighting the the hardships it has he doesn't want to deal with any of it anymore um i think what's really cute about the song though is at the very end of it we get these lyrics i miss that noise you make when you sleep i turn back now my scars and my stains and i'm back before you know i escaped i really like his comeback and like nah i i i want to make i want to make this work out i want i want this to work for everything he wants to try, which leads us beautifully into the final track, Lost in the Ocean, and I mm, cannot emphasize it enough. This has got to be in my top three closers of any artist, of any album of all time. Any album I've heard, this song closed the album so perfectly. And it's, the whole song has a different vibe, because this whole album, we've been building up this relationship, these fights and contentions and everything. And we finally end it with him, with with on the run, saying, nah, uh, almost breaking up, but then coming back and saying, nah, I don't want to do it. And Lost in the Ocean comes, where we hear him saying, You know I'd do anything for you, babe, oh, now I'm hearing them open, sun in the afternoon. It kind of encapsulates what the album title, I Love You So Iffy Much, is really talking about. Is that even with all of this he really likes her and he's going to make it all work and everything I don't know if this is talking about I assume it's talking about Dave Bailey's own relationship but I mean everything is for anyone in a newlywed or a newly relationship situation with all of the struggles they face but besides the story this song lost in the ocean it sounds kind of like a Taylor Swift beat almost but more of a cosmic glass animal sound to it and it it just the whole switch from the whole album going to this one is a nice peaceful way to end kind of like you are lost in the ocean like you're on the ocean boating away alone and this is i just i don't know it just it completed the album in, in a brilliant way that i i don't know it was only a 40 minute record but the whole record was a solid 40 minutes from start to finish. It has the best opener and closer I've heard in a while from any album. So honestly, it was a good album. You should listen to this record if you like the psychedelic sounds from Tame Impala. Um, if you like even, even more modern rock type sounds, I would say. Pop rock. Um, they, they've definitely carved their own way into the pop, pop scene and this album's only made their reach so much bigger being such a great album and I, it only makes me want to see what's on the next one so at the end of the day i think i'm going to have to give this uh, album a solid nine nine out of ten that's it it's a nine out of ten i know it's a high review uh don't worry i don't give albums high reviews normally I rarely do, and um, this just happens to be the album I want to review for YouTube, and I really enjoyed this album, and I want everyone else to check it out. If you if you want to check it out, check it out. Tell me your thoughts. What are your thoughts? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Um, 
Anyways, I'll catch you all next time.